we can find the six trigonometric functions using any point other than the origin on the terminal side of an angle. So, and what we mean by that is, let me flip over and look at one of these real quick. So we found this sine and cosine by using the point 815. But I could put another point right here and build another triangle and still find this same sign. It's still going to come out to be the same. And this is why. Because the angle has two distinct points on its terminal side. Let's say we have P, X, Y, and we'll call the next point P prime, X prime, Y prime. R is going to be the length of the hypotenuse of our original triangle of triangle OPQ. And we're going to let R prime be the length of the hypotenuse from triangle O prime. Actually, it's just O. Just same O. So no O prime. O, P, Q. P prime, Q prime. So if we're talking about this over here, this first, this first dot was P, and this one would be P prime. So O doesn't change. But Q and P changed, right? But since corresponding sides of similar triangles are proportional, then that means that sine, which is Y over R, is proportional to Y prime over R prime because they're similar triangles. So sine theta y over r is the same no matter what point you use to find it it's going to be the same because it, it's just two similar triangles so what that means is what sine of 43 is always the same it doesn't matter how big your triangle is or how small your triangle is or which way your triangle is facing. If it's a 43 degree angle, the sign will always be the same. And that's true of the other five trig functions as well. The cosine will always be the same and the tangent will always be the same. Um, we can also find the trig, the trig function values of an angle if we know the equation If we know the equation of the line coinciding with the terminal side, then we can also find our trig functions. So, looking back here, if I knew the equation that goes with this line that passes through the terminal side, even if I don't know any point, they didn't give me a point, if I know the equation of that line, then I can also find all the trig functions. So re recall that AX plus BY equals zero is a line that passes through the origin. If we restrict X to have only non-positive or non-negative values, we obtain as the graph a ray with the endpoint at the origin. And that can serve as the terminal side of an angle theta in standard position. I know that's a lot of words, but we're going to do one and it'll make sense. Uh. function values of an angle in standard position if the terminal side of theta is defined by x plus 2y 
equals zero, and x is greater than or equal to zero. So I'm going to draw a picture. Now, I could, I could plot this line. Um, if we could put it in slope intercept if we wanted to. So I'll do that real quick. Let's see. 2y equals negative x divided by 2. So y equals negative 1 half x plus 0. So that would be down 1 over 2, down 1 over 2. So that would be a line. Oh, but they've restricted me. So instead of drawing a whole line, they've restricted me to x being greater than or equal to 0. So that means I'm only going to draw a ray this direction. And I am looking for the six trig functions that go with this. All right, well, it says as long as I use x is greater than or equal to 0, any point will work. So I'm going to pick an, an arbitrary x value. It doesn't matter what x value you choose. So um, it can't be the origin. So I'm going to use, let's just say x is 2. So I'm going to take x equals 2, and I'm going to plug it into the equation again. So that's going to be 2 plus 2y equals 0. So 2y equals negative 2. So y equals negative 1. So now I have a point that I can use. And now I can do it just like all the other problems that I've been doing. So I can go back and go, okay, here's my point. It's the point 2, negative 1, which means that my x value is 2, my y value is negative 1, and I have to calculate my r. So let's see. r equals the square root of 2 squared plus negative 1 squared. So r equals square root 5. And now we go find sine, cosine, tangent. So, let's see. All right, so sine is going to be negative 1 over square root 5. You can't leave it like that. You have to rationalize it. Do you remember how to rationalize? We will rationalize a lot. Do you remember how to rationalize? You can't have a square root on the bottom of a fraction. Multiply it by itself. And if I multiply the bottom by square root 5, I also have to multiply the top by square root 5. So doing that, multiplying the square root by itself eliminates the radical and leaves it just 5 on bottom. Negative 1 times square root of 5 is negative square root of 5. So that's sine. Cosine is going to be 2 over square root 5, which I also have to rationalize. It's going to be 2 square root 5 over 5. Tangent, negative 1 over 2. Oh, negative 1 over um, Cosecant. I can flip over sine. Don't flip over the rationalized version. Flip over the non-rationalized version because it won't matter anymore because that'll put the square root on top. So it'll be negative square root 5. Secant is going to be square root 5 over 2. And cotangent is going to be negative 2. Everybody okay? Sort of? I'm here.